Good evening, and welcome to our weekly Compline service. I'm Mother Terry. I'm the new rector at St. John's Shaughnessy, and I'm so glad that you've decided to join us for this time of prayer. Before we begin, I'd like to invite you to get comfortable and to rest in God's peace for a few moments of silence as we prepare ourselves to draw near to God in prayer. The God of peace grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The angels of God guard us through the night and quiet the powers of darkness. The Spirit of God be our guide to lead us to peace and to glory. It is but lost labor that we haste to rise up early and so late take our rest, and eat the bread of anxiety. For those beloved of God are given gifts even while they sleep. Dear God, we thank you for all that is good, for our creation and our humanity, for the stewardship you have given us of this planet Earth, for the gifts of life and of one another, for your love which is unbounded, and eternal. Merciful God, we have not loved you with our whole heart, nor our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, forgive what we have been, accept us as we are, and guide what we shall be. God of mercy, you forgive our past sin. You strengthen us in your gift of eternal life. You shape us for glory. O oh God of mercy, we thank you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. 
When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Here ends the reading. Those of you who were able to join us for worship last Sunday may recall that in my sermon, I talked about the wise men and what it is that makes them wise, what it is that makes us wise. If you missed it, please feel free to give it a listen. But since tomorrow is officially the Feast of Epiphany, January 6th, I thought maybe we'd spend a little more time thinking about the wise men this evening. <clears throat> As I mentioned in my sermon, scripture doesn't tell us much about them. All we know is that they were from the East, so probably Persia or Babylon. The use of the word magi to describe them means they were probably practitioners of Zoroastrianism. But beyond that, we don't have much to go on. We don't even know how many of them there were. While our nativity scenes always feature three people with treasure chests, Matthew doesn't actually tell us a specific number of wise men. It's probably only because he mentions three gifts that we imagine three individuals, one carrying each one. So for a different perspective, imagine if there were only two. Or imagine if there were 20. In fact, Christians in the Syriac churches of the East imagine the same scene with 12 wise men, probably for the symbolism of the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles. But whatever their number might actually have been, we can say that it would be quite unusual for a very small group of noblemen to make a journey like that on their own in those days. They would have gone with a group for safety, probably with attendants to assist them. And think about Herod. Would he have paid much attention to the wise men if there had been only a few of them? But a whole caravan descending on Jerusalem and asking about another king? Now all of a sudden it seems like more of a threat to his power, doesn't it? So imagine the story again with many, many wise people traveling a great distance to find Jesus. What do you think they were all looking for? They weren't part of the Jewish tradition, so they weren't searching for the Messiah. What did they need? Hope? Security? Maybe they didn't even know what they needed, but it just felt compelling. Jesus certainly seems to have always had that quality about him, doesn't he? Even people who didn't know they were unfulfilled dropped everything to follow him. So tonight I'm wondering if we imagine ourselves in that possible crowd of people seeking the Christ child, what is it we're looking for right now? What do we need in our lives? Is there a place in your heart that's empty or a place that's closed? Are there relationships that need some healing? Do you just need a sense of direction or purpose? What draws you to Jesus now? What do you need from God in this moment? Whatever it is, bring those hopes with you as we draw nearer to Jesus tonight in prayer. Let's bring our needs and our hopes and our desires to him as an offering. With the children on Sunday, we talked about how we can't give Jesus gold or frankincense or myrrh today, but we can give him our hearts. And while, yes, that means giving him our love and trying to share that love with others, that's not all there is. Let's not hold anything back. Jesus doesn't just want the happy parts of our hearts. We don't have to dress it up for him. 
He came into this world so that he could know our pain, our sadness, our frustration, and he wants to share them. He wants to bear those things with us and for us. So let's bring all the treasures of our hearts, our joys, our fears, our hopes and our sorrows, all of it, and let's lay them at his feet. Into your hands, O God, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O God of truth and love. Keep us, O God, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Preserve us, O God, waking, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Preserve us, O God, waking and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Come, O Spirit of God, and make within us your dwelling place and home. May our darkness be dispelled by your light and our troubles calmed by your peace. May all evils be redeemed by your love, all pain transformed through the suffering of Christ, and all dying glorified by his risen life. Amen. Keep watch, dear God, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. At this time, I invite your own prayers and thanksgivings. Gracious God, support us all the day long of this earthly life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, O oh God, in your mercy, grant us safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Look down, O God, from your heavenly throne and illumine this night with your celestial brightness, that by night as by day your people may glorify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I will lie down in peace and take my rest, for it is in God alone that I dwell unafraid. May God's name be praised beyond the furthest star, glorified and exalted above all forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen.